Let's take a look at the 3x3 series Makolo jammer arms. I want to take this from a little bit of a different angle. I'm not looking at this from the perspective of are these good for the price because I will tell you right here at the beginning of the video they are good for the price. 279 bucks these are great. What I want to actually take a look at is how do these stack up at $279 with the Rogue jammer arms which are $1,170. So nearly a full thousand dollars more expensive. What's up guys, Ryan here, founder of TradeawayTraining.com where we help busy parents transform their bodies from home. If you wanna work with us to achieve your body transformation goals, click the link down in the description. But for now, let's get into this comparison. This is not a fair comparison. This is a true David and Goliath match here with a full you know, $900 price gap. But how good are these if you're on a budget? Are you actually missing out on going with such a budget option versus something like the premium Rogue Jammer and Trolley Arms? The short answer is as far as the functionality is concerned, you're not really missing out on anything. You're going to be able to do the same exercises with these as you are with those. Jammer Arms are in my opinion an essential piece of home gym equipment once you have a rack and a bar and a bench and some dumbbells and maybe a cable setup if you have room for it this would be your next purchase beyond those or maybe even purchase these before cables if you don't have the budget or the space for a cable machine because it's kind of like dumbbells and barbells in the sense that your imagination is really the limit with how much you can get out of a set of jammer arms. You can train your entire body with a set of these bad boys. You can do leg exercises, you can do bicep exercises, tricep exercises, back exercises, chest exercises. You can do traps. You can do basically anything that you want with these guys. I'll have some b-roll going up on screen of different exercises that I've personally done with these jammer arms and we'll get into some of the features and compare this to the Rogues. This product was provided free for review by Makolo, but as always, that will have absolutely no impact on this review itself. And there is a link to purchase this product if you want it down in the description. It is an affiliate link, so it will help out the channel if you use it, but it adds no additional cost to you. First up, let's talk powder coat. The powder coat is pretty good. It's as good as you could expect it to be for a $279 product. It's not the most amazing powdered coat I've ever seen. There are some nicks on it and it will probably get scratched up over time, but it's an okay powder coat. And for $279, I would consider this to be a pretty decent powder coat. Now there are some other fit and finish things that are a little bit on the lower end if you're comparing against something like the Rogue. For example, these little stoppers here are just kind of like a, a flimsy plastic that will probably break over time if I had my guess. Though honestly, they may last, they may not get broke because you have the rubber stoppers on each end. So unless you accidentally smash this thing with a plate, it's actually probably not gonna get hit. So now that I say that out loud, these are probably gonna be good to go for a while. And even if they do get broke off or if they fall off and get lost or something like that, it doesn't really affect the functionality of the machine. So it's not really a huge deal. And moving on to how these things adjust, and some of the actual functionality. It's pretty simple. You have these little hitch pins here. You pull both the pins out and then you can pull these guys out, slide this up and down where you want it, pop the two pins back in, put the little hitch pins back in to keep it from falling out at any point and you're good to go. And there's a little bit, not a lot, but there's a little bit of a slant. You know, I would say, you know, this is a 90 degree angle. So this is maybe like an 80 75 degree angle, something like that. So enough that it can change the orientation that you want the handles, depending on the exercise, but it's not a super aggressive angle. Whereas if you see back here on the Rogues, we're talking like a 60 degree angle. So it's a little bit more pronounced and can change dramatically how you do certain exercises. Not considering that really a pro or a con in this case, it just is different. 
and something to note. And we're gonna move on down the arms here. We're gonna come back to the weight sleeves here in just a second. And we have a feature down here at the base that actually is a pro of the Macolos over the Rogues. The Rogues do not have this feature, which is these little stopper pins on the bottom here, which is great for multiple reasons because you can set the starting point for different exercises. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different adjustment points. So you can start at different places for different exercise if you wanna have those stopper pins there. And if you want to raise these up, put the jammer arms up here at the top, you can store the arms out of the way. You can have them pointing up in the air, similar to the rep fitness jammer arms, whereas that is something that you actually cannot do with the significantly more expensive rogue arms. So interesting little thing there. But also on the attachment points, that's where we have the first place where the rogue is the absolute hands down clear winner because when it comes to the rogue, the adjustment is super simple. You pull out the little pin, there's a little handle on the back that you pull, and then you roll it up and down the upright, let it go, and then you slap the retention pin back in, or the safety pin back in. But again, we're talking about a completely unfair comparison because we're talking about a $900 price cap. But the way that these adjust are a little bit fiddly, and I'll just adjust it here in real time so you can see. It's not terrible, but it's also not great. You have the little hitch pins here, pull both of those out, and then you've got to hold this nice and secure. I like to put my knee up against it if I'm adjusting it from a low place. Give it a little wiggle to get this pin out. And then if I want to adjust it up high, you have to actually take it off and if we were to, I should have thought this through some more because I'm going to hit the ceiling and take this pin out right here. Now let's say we're adjusting it up high for, you know, maybe a standing jammer press. Boom, once you get that top pin in, then you're pretty much good to go from there. You can set the second pin in, and put the two hitch pins in here. And then I'll also show off what I was talking about earlier, where I was saying you could store these up out of the way. Oh, hitting the pipes up there. So there you go. So it's not an exorbitant amount of time, but you're not really gonna be using these for supersets. If you're using two different jammer exercises in the same workout and you need to take it from down low to up high or vice versa, it's not gonna be a huge deal though. Unfortunately, that's something that's not gonna change. It's just a matter of the huge gap in price. You're not gonna get a fancy trolley system for less than 300 bucks. But there are a few changes that I have talked to Makolo about that I think could be made and still keep this at a similar price point. First, the weight stopper, the little rubber gasket that stops the weights from hitting the arm, it's not thick enough. It needs to be about two or three times the thickness because if you're using these jammer arms inside of the rack, which if you're not using them inside the rack, it doesn't matter. But for me, I love using jammer arms inside the rack because I love doing things like chest press. I'll roll my bench in, I'll set the spotters and I'll do you know, machine chest press with jammer arms, or I'll come in here and do rows with the jammer arms and different things like that. So I, I prefer to always have my jammers inside the rack. And if you're using them inside the rack and you have them sitting on the cross members here, jammer arms will twist a little bit because there's a little bit of play here and you're pulling up and there's weight on this side pulling down. So they do twist a small amount and with the 
really thin gasket on there, there's not enough spacing to prevent the weight plates from hitting that bottom cross member. It's not a huge deal. You could add another rubber gasket on there yourself for you know less than a dollar or you could add a set of collars or anything to add extra space there and it's not going to be a deal breaker but it is something i think that they could fix for almost no additional cost to them and they could probably even keep the price point the same the other thing is the inside of the mounting bracket is metal so you have metal on metal and if you have a nice rack you're probably going to be scratching up the rack. This is something you could fix yourself by putting some sort of like, uh, I've seen people put like right here, the guy who had this rack before me actually got some Velcro tape and put on the inside of the J-cups and that way it keeps the J-cups from hitting metal on metal right here. You could do something like that to fix it yourself, but with future iterations of this product, I would love to see some UHMW plastic that, again, won't add a ton of price to the unit itself. And even if they brought the price up a little bit, some of these small changes I think would be worth the extra price. If they keep it at like $299, keep it under the $300 mark, and they fix the gasket, they put UHMW plastic inside of there, I think that's worth the price difference. And it's going to you know, be small changes that matter a lot. Two bigger changes that could be made but probably won't and can't because it would jump the price up quite a bit is the powder coated weight sleeve if they replace this with something like a chrome weight sleeve right here it would just work a little bit better for the longevity because this will get scratched up very quickly there's already some pretty deep scratches on the powder coat from sliding plates on and off again not a deal breaker and this is something that I don't see being changed because it would jump the price up quite a bit and put this into a different category a different price point to where it's no longer the budget option at that point point. and then another thing would be if they could come up with some sort of way to do a inexpensive trolley if they could get creative and have some sort of way that it can slide up and down the upright so that it adjusts just a little bit faster and easier but again, that's something that I definitely don't see without this changing price points quite considerably. To get down to the root of the issue, will these do the job or do you need to step it up to something quite a bit more expensive? And I guess my question to that would be, you know, what is your budget? If you have the budget for jammers with a trolley system and all of that, like these rogues or a rep fitness trolley, great, spend the money and you're gonna love them. I love mine. But if you're on a budget and you don't have $1,200 plus shipping laying around to spend on a pair of jammer arms, but you wanna be able to do jammer exercises and you have 300 bucks that you could spend on your home gym, then the Makolo jammer arms are an absolute must have and I think you're going to genuinely enjoy them. There'll be a link to purchase these down in the description. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you next week. My name is Ryan Treadaway, founder of TreadawayTraining.com. If you want to work with me and my team, and the third thing, and two other small, and two other, ah, blah, blah.